Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 51, Set Up Vagrant for Rails. In this episode, you'll learn how to install programs on your Vagrant box, set up Postgres on your Vagrant box, generate a Rails app, and run the Rails server on the Vagrant box. If you want to code along, be sure you have VirtualBox and Vagrant installed and a Vagrant box created. You can check out Ruby Snack number 50 for those instructions. For setting up your box, the process is very similar to setting up a virtual private server on DigitalOcean or Amazon. You need to SSH into the box and install the necessary programs and gems. If you watched my DigitalOcean series, then this will be pretty familiar. Getting started, always you'll run Vagrant Up and then you can run Vagrant SSH. If you only want one terminal open, you'll need to install Git on your box. An upcoming Ruby snack will address using GitHub with Vagrant. It does take a little bit more, and I'll show you that in another episode. But if you want to go ahead and install Git, go ahead. You would use the command sudo apt-get install git-all. Opening up your terminal in the folder where the Vagrant file exists, I'm going to run Vagrant up. And if you haven't run Vagrant in a little bit, it may go ahead and update its software. And that is what's happening now, is that it's going ahead and checking to make sure that it has the latest and greatest from Vagrant. So now I'm going to run Vagrant SSH, which will put me into that Vagrant box. First up, we're going to install Git and say yes. And this takes a little bit of time, so I've gone ahead and sped that up for you. And I will cut to the end. Now we will install Postgres as our database. The first command is sudo apt-get install Postgres SQL and the dependency libq-dev. Once that's installed, you'll go ahead into the user Postgres. So it'll be sudo su-postgres. Once you're in that user, then you'll run the psql command line. We'll create a user vagrant because that's how our app is going to be using the database in this case. Now we're going to go ahead and create a database. Again, I called my app Frosty, but you can put whatever your app name is there. Frosty Development, and we'll create a database Frosty Test. Then we're going to grant all privileges on the database Frosty Development to Vagrant and grant all privileges on the database Frosty Test to Vagrant. And then we get out of Postgres with the slash Q, and then we exit the Postgres user. So then we're back into the Vagrant box as user Vagrant. Here we are back in our terminal where I will go ahead and install Postgres. And again, say yes, when it asks you, do you want to be sure? And again, this can take quite a bit of time, so I will have sped this up and we'll cut to the end. Now we're going to go into the user Postgres and simply type in PSQL to open up that command line. And now I will create the user Vagrant and I'll create that database Frosty Development and create Frosty Test. Now, you gotta be sure, because if you copy paste from somewhere and the quotation marks aren't quite right, you'll get error messages instead. I fixed those up and I've granted all the permissions and I've exited out of that. Now it's time to install Ruby and we're gonna do that with RVM. First, we need to get the server key that allows us to download and install RVM and that's the second command. The next command updates your bash session so that you can use RVM right away. Then we'll run RVM list known. And I like to install the newest stable version of Ruby, which at the time of this recording was 2.3. Then we'll run which Ruby just to be sure it installed. Back in our terminal, let's go ahead and get that server key and add that. Then we'll run the command to download and install RVM. And it's installing, doesn't take too long. And then, as always, we actually need to run the command, change the source so that RVM is working in our current session. So I'll copy that and paste that in there. Now we'll run RVM list known, and we see that RVM is doing well, and we will look and find the latest stable version of Ruby. And we'll go ahead and install that. This, again, takes a little bit of time, so I'm speeding it up and cutting to the end. Then we run which Ruby, and there it is, it's installed. We need just a few more things. We're gonna install Bundler, Node.js, and then Rails. We'll run gem install Bundler, 
and then sudo apt-get install node.js or whatever flavor of JavaScript runtime you want to include then this is a little different than if you were setting up a server, especially if you're using Capistrano, which would then install Rails for you. For Vagrant, you need to go ahead and install it on the box. So we'll gem install Rails and then make sure that Rails was installed with Rails-V. All right, back in that terminal, let's go ahead and install Bundler, which doesn't take a whole lot of time. Now we'll go ahead and install Node.js. And again, you say yes, and this doesn't take too much time. And now we will install the Rails gem. So it will be gem install Rails. Now this does take a little bit of time. To speed it up, you could always install Rails without the documentation. So I'm just gonna cut to the end here. Now we run Rails-V and we see that it installed. Now we've pretty much set up our Vagrant box. Now we're going to generate the app on our local machine. So open up a new terminal window or tab and navigate to the folder with the Vagrant file. Now we're going to create the app, Rails new, whatever app name you want. And let's go ahead and set the database to be Postgres SQL. Once that generates, we'll CD into the app. Now open the app in your favorite text editor and double check the database YML is correct. Once again in our terminal, I'll go ahead and open another tab. So I'm still in the Vagrant box in the other tab. Let's go ahead and generate the new Rails app. I'm going to call it Frosty, of course. Recording this in the winter time. And now I hit enter and it generates the new app. Now, if you are on a Windows machine, this might be a little bit more difficult for you. So you may wanna consider doing that in your Vagrant box, but In this case, the Vagrant box is only supposed to be running the programs running your app. The app is supposed to be located on your local machine. So if you can get past that part on Windows, then you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and open up the app in my editor, which I use Sublime. And looking at the database YML, just to be sure that it indeed says Postgres and that we have our database named what it should be for what we set up on the Vagrant box. And it is. Now let's test running the Rails server. So you're gonna go back into the tab or back into the window into your Vagrant session. And you're going to CD into slash Vagrant and then CD into your app name. You're gonna then bundle install and then you're gonna run the Rails server, which I had a little bit of trouble with. And then I ended up needing to use Rails S-B 0.0.0.0. And I'll show you a little bit how you can avoid that in just a moment. All right, here I am going over to the other tab. I'm back into the Vagrant Box SSH session. And let's go ahead and CD into the Vagrant folder and then CD into Frosty because it has access there to those files. Now let's go ahead and, and then run Rails S. Oh, whoops, I forgot bundle install. Got it in bundle install it first. So we're gonna install it here on the Vagrant box. So bundle install. And this again takes just a moment, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut to the end. Now you can try Rails S. Now if you try just Rails S, it looks like everything loads correctly and that it's running. However, when you go to your local browser, and you go to localhost 3000, it can't find your Rails app. So instead, I used Rails S-B and zeros. And this time when I go to the browser, there it is, our welcome page. Now here's how you can edit your Rails app in order to always use that host 0.0.0.0. You will include this in the boot.rb to change our class server to use those zeros as well. So in your text editor, you'll open up the boot file. Probably haven't ever done this before. Hey, why not? It's fun. Let's go ahead and modify that and we'll save. Then let's go ahead and close that server session. And now we will run just plain Rails S. And you can see now it's on the host zeros. And when I refresh, and it's still there, it's still working. And now you're ready to continue development.
You start any session with the following and run Rails commands in your Vagrant SSH session. So you'll say Vagrant up if it's not already, Vagrant SSH, going to CD into Vagrant and then CD into your app name. So if there are any future software dependencies, perhaps you're installing Paperclip and you need Image Magic, you install those in the Vagrant SSH session. Now for Git, you can certainly keep doing that locally. You would run git init on your local tab and push to GitHub from the local terminal, unless you set up GitHub from within the Vagrant box. And again, that'll be a future episode. Here are a few more resources you can check out, especially that Stack Overflow question where I found how to run the Rails server with a standard Rails S. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up. If you are not already subscribed on YouTube, click that big red button to do so. You get the episodes just a little bit before everyone else. And it's best if you have a comment or question to leave that on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.